Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. My name is Sean from Psalm Wine Club, and the wine I'm going to be tasting today is the 2020 Zuccardi Q Chardonnay. This is part of the January 2024 Psalm Wine Club box, and a, an incredible winery. Zuccardi is uh, an iconic winery in Argentina, uh, started in 1963 by Alberto Zuccardi. Uh, over the past 60 years, they have become one of the most important uh, wineries in South America, not just in Argentina. Uh, the third generation of the family, uh, Sebastián Zuccardi, is now in charge of of day-to-day -day operations and winemaking. Uh, his father, José Alberto Zuccardi, was here in Vancouver uh, less than 10 years ago. It's got to be 2015 or 2016. Uh, I went to a, a lunch with Zuccardi and got to hang out and chat and talk about the, the family and talk about the history of these wines, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to be actually able to put one in the box for you now. Uh, so the Q series was started in 1999. Uh, Q stands for quality, uh, and these wines were the first wines that Zuccardi produced that actually had the family name on the front of it. Uh, they wanted to do a regional expression, uh, showing off their best parcels uh, and single variety uh, kind of expressions of different parts of Tupungato and Uca Valley in Mendoza, where they are based. So this is coming from, well, let's break it down. So Argentina, uh, Mendoza province, Uco Valley in the north of Mendoza, Tupungato in the north of uh, Uco Valley, and then within Tupungato, this is coming from two sites in Gualtolari and El Paral, uh, two GIs uh, in the western part of Tupungato to the west of the town. 100% uh, Chardonnay, 50% in untoasted uh, French oak, so they haven't done any any charring on the inside of the barrel, so it's just the, the uh, raw naked wood, and 50% in concrete. Uh, this does not go through malolactic. Malolactic is a conversion process of malic acid into or lactic acid, malic acid into lactic acid. So malic acid is the kind of acid that you find in like green apples. It's very tangy, it's very tart. It's also one of the most common acids that you find in grapes. Lactic acid, lactose, like it says, is the, the acid that you find in milk and dairy products. So when it goes through malolactic, often you can get creamy dairy components and aromas and flavors in wine and a lot of people confuse those characteristics with oak characteristics because they do often go hand in hand but not always so in this case there is some oak but no mallow so we'll keep that in mind as we taste uh there yeah the other half in concrete concrete vessels uh and then kind of wanting to block that mallow to create this kind of leaner brighter fresher style uh, and highlight the acidity and the chalky terroir that they have in Guatalari and El Paral. So, if you've been to Argentina, uh, you understand that this is incredibly uh, dynamic winemaking. This is winemaking on the edge of what's possible. Uh, these vineyards are between 1200 and 1400 meters above sea level right in the foothills of the Antilles. This is incredibly cool climate winemaking. The first winery to actually plant in this area was Chandon, as in Moet and Chandon, because they wanted to make sparkling wine in Argentina. Uh, and other wineries soon followed, but that's the kind of terroir and climate that this area has. It's similar in heat units to uh, Champagne. Uh, so very crisp, very clean, bright, uh, energetic wines that are produced here and in Guatalari and El Paral, specifically Chardonnay is kind of the star variety of the area. This is 2020, uh, which vintage wise was a little bit riper and a little bit fleshier. So this wine in a cooler vintage would be austere. It would be very sharp, very high acid, uh, almost maybe aggressively so. A riper vintage in a cooler climate is a great opportunity to see the kind of juicier side of the variety and of the region while still being a, a drinkable wine with freshness and balance and elegance. So there's some 
riper yellow apple, there's some white peach, kind of underripe stone fruit and ripe pomaceous fruit here. I love this kind of lemon oil, lemon zest character to the wine as well. There is a touch of oak. I get some spice character, some of that untoasted uh, raw French oak coming through, giving you a little bit of vanilla, toasty spice, uh, cedar brush. But then there's also a ton of like sidewalk chalk. It's crunchy, chalky limestone soil uh, expressing itself here too. Acids are mouth-watering, but there's still fruit. There is a roundness and a generosity to the fruit in this wine. Uh, so you, you taste it, you'll feel the acidity. It kind of like hits you with a little bit of sharpness, and then you feel the soft kind of rounded fruit character kind of wash over the rest of your palate and balance out the intensity of that acidity. There's a little bit of like um, a seashell, uh, like crab shell. It's got like a little bit of a salty, um, calcareous, chalky combination. So like when you crush up lobster shells or seashells, that like kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's like salty, chalky ocean. And there is that character coming through and it specifically on the finish it kind of lingers with that character this wine will definitely benefit from being open for a little while you can decant this this wine when i first poured it does have a little bit of uh, reduction uh, which is a when you have a wine that is Kind of produced lower in oxygen it in the bottle it kind of can give off a little bit of sulfur characteristics and it just needs some air so just splash it around you throw this in a decanter take it out of the fridge you put it into a canter if you change from the bottle into a decanter that's been at room temperature you'll immediately start to bring the wine up in temperature you will uh, allow it to be a little bit more aromatic and expressive uh, and then you don't have to worry about having it out of the fridge for 15 or 20 minutes before you pour it into a glass because you can do the same thing in five minutes by just putting it into a decanter and letting it breathe. <sighs> so happy about this wine, about having the opportunity to share this with you. I'm obviously not the only one that thinks that Zuccardi is incredible. They were named Best Vineyard in the World in 2019, 2020, and 2021. <laughs> Uh, and then in 2022, they were named New World Winery of the Year. Uh, like I said, iconic, important, a great story to tell, uh, and delicious wines to boot. So I hope that you all really enjoy the Zuccardi Q Chardonnay as much as I do. Uh, if you have questions about Zuccardi or the other wines that they make, or you want to talk about food and wine and of the region or of the, the character of these wines, Hit me up. We'll chat. I'm going to go drink the rest of my wine. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you guys all next time.